Hello and welcome back to part two of the speed modeling tutorial series. Uh, in this series, I would like to just hop right into creating a subject that we can apply some of the previous principles, if you have not seen video one, uh, that we discussed in terms of form language, setting up your uh, basic subtool as a polymesh 3D, and using the Boolean system in the way of insert meshes to quickly automate some form language. So for this part here, um, I'm going to just create a basic subject, something that is recognizable. Uh, if any of you have seen the movie Independence Day, probably already recognize this silhouette. Um, I was inspired by the alien ship and its form language. Uh, so I wanted to kind of create a little reflective subject that was influenced by that. Now, what I'm doing right now is I've set up my parent-child uh, relationship with the source shape and then its duplicate. And I do this for the initial start of the uh, subtractive Boolean workflow. Um, whereas in I am adding shapes, but subtracting little bits of the silhouette to create planar forms. Now, if you have not watched part one of this, I do suggest going and taking a look at that video, it is a free video. Um, if you are uh, watching this now, you may have already uh, purchased the full packet for this particular uh, modeling series. You should already be caught up to speed on a few of the basic principles we're going to be discussing today. First thing I wanna talk about is the depth options within the brush settings. This is very important. Um, as you can see, I'm sitting here creating some aesthetics on the surface of this basic silhouette. I'm creating something in the way of guidelines for some of the interior shapes, but I have to play around with the depth curve settings. And as you can see, you can lower the center point of that curve. And as it intersects into the middle line, that represents the depth of each brush you're working with. Now what I'm gonna do is create a separate appended subtool to this subject. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, um, as you can see, I'm going back and forth between my groups. You can see that there are a different set of subtool Boolean stacks that all are grouped into their own categories of influence on the main object, our parent ship shape. Say that five times fast. <laughs> um, so the idea here is to work clean, but also keep your subtool stack at a minimum. Uh, I personally find this to be a lot more um, progressive in the way of uh, workflows and cleaning that model up for production um, outputs later on as we continue to you know, refine great greater context for these models. But the focus of this particular video is to show the speed process of automation in the way of you're pulling things from the back of your mind, you're playing around with shape language, and you're in essence expanding on your visual dictionary. So here again, I'm just exploring the surface. Uh, I am using basic gestalt theories here. If you're not familiar with gestalt, gestalt design theory, please uh, you know take a look at that. Um, at your own measure in the way of a Google search. Uh, but we're going to be talking about these things quite a bit in form language. And in essence, what is Gestalt theory and Gestalt design theory? Uh, well, Gestalt is more of a psychological uh, term. And it's talking about uh, how our minds interpret things, mostly compositional, um, but also in the way of uh, negative positive subject matter. What am I talking about? So um, as I look at the surface of the ship, the negative areas are going to be the areas in the center of the ship where you see more smooth forms and there isn't a lot of uh, shape influence going on. You know, it's kind of like looking at a blank canvas and then you put a couple of dots in the middle and your eye will naturally settle toward the dots in the middle. Um, in layman's terms, this is known as rest and activity to the composition. So as I'm sitting here going through these, uh, these primitive shapes and um, uh, fabricated forms in this insert mesh, I'm looking for connections. I'm using rest and activity 
in areas where there's lots of tiny form language going on and then there's um, negative smooth blank spaces and these are all complementary to each other just as you want someone to notice one side of the fence you have to have some contrast for that to take place both sides of the fence are equal to each other this is known as dichotomy so in gestalt design theory um, we're using these things constantly as we are looking around for the right shape choices. One thing I want to point out um, that I didn't mention in the previous video is that when you are inserting in a, a mesh, and honestly to the effect any brush in ZBrush, um, if you hold down Alt, you're going to get the inversion of that tool. This is extremely valuable because um, sometimes you'll get an entirely different form language output while you're exploring simply by inverting the shape that you're working with or that given uh, insert mesh you're working with. Um, here I am exploring some trim lines, uh, using topographic contours to create connections around the pilot's uh, cockpit here. Um, and I wanna make sure that these things meld together. So you can see I'm using both the move topologic brush to smooth these uh, insert meshes, as well as gently massage them to find out um, you know, what aesthetically makes sense. This process, quite honestly, eats up most of the time in the way of you working in a automatic uh, modeling focus. And a lot of this technique stems from two places, uh, the history and practice of greebling, which you're not familiar with greebling is a not just a funny word, but um, a practice stemming back from the early, early practical VFX ages where you'd have, um, you know, lots of unique props that had to fill sci-fi scenes, um, which were basically being assembled from cheap found objects, you know, um, radio circuitry and computer parts and shaving equipment. Uh, these things would be hot glued together in order to create what would from a distance look like complex surface information. Um, there's a lot to be discussed about that, you know, and I won't fill up this video with too much, but just understand that these practices are still very much um, applied in today's workflows as demonstrated here. All right, so I'm starting to, again, play around with this rest and activity aspect of finding my form language. Um, I'm also thinking about some of the practicality of this. So here I start using that alt insert uh, mesh function to uh, push these seemingly propel areas, these almost jet these jet projectile areas um, from underneath to create some consistency in how this thing might levitate fly. Um, furthermore, I'm also using um, that same subtool uh, to cut away at some of the silhouette. Um, you can use the insert functions in more than one way. You can use them to work inside of your silhouette and the outside trimming some of the contours of your silhouette. So it's a pretty uh, versatile way of working. You know, this automatic process uh, stems from some of the early, uh, you know, great artists such as Salvador Dali, um, and all of his, uh, you know, uh, realist illustrative colleagues um, who had pretty much discovered the importance of exercising the imagination from its subconscious. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and convert this from a Boolean mesh into a poly mesh 3D. And I do that because it cuts down on the amount of uh, inserted meshes and just the complexity of stacking layers after layers. Um, and I know that I've committed to some aspects of the design. So um, now I'm gonna go ahead and focus on the pilot's cabin here. Um, and the reason why I work in that workflow uh, approach is simply because I like to keep things minimal. I, I don't like to uh, you know, create too much clutter. Um, it allows me to problem solve easier. Uh, and you know, depending on what machine you're on, I'm currently working off of a laptop. Um, you know, depending on what machine you're on, 
uh, you know, you could really start to tax your memory and CPU. You know, if you don't have like say, you know, the latest 3K RTX cards and, you know, uh, 64 gigs or more of RAM. Um, so just kind of keep those things in mind. Um, so here I'm exploring this, this egg shape. You know, uh, this is an arbitrary shape at the moment because it really is serving the purpose of continuing contours and creating that negative and positive activity. But I also need to uh, make sure that form function wise, it is consistent with what I've created. So currently I'm problem solving the issue of it penetrating through the bottom and cutting off the, uh, the, the jet turbines that are sitting underneath the ship. Um, so I need that propulsion system to be clear. So what I'm gonna do is create a child of the uh, egg shape and I'm gonna use the Boolean method uh, to cut away the base. Now I could have done this in a number of different ways. I could have simply gone in and um, you know, use some marquee select and delete function. So there's a number of different tools in here to do that. Um, but because the uh, this particular Boolean system is so fast, I just wanted to, you know, just cut away at it and just continue working without having one extra step there. Um, so here I've just scaled up my brush. As you can see, it's a really large brush now. And I'm using a really basic primitive to... Uh, to explore, you know, how much I can cut away. The thing I want to emphasize is the versatility of the insert mesh function combined with Boolean. There's always going to be more than one way to do something in ZBrush, but allowing your imagination to stay in that improv seat, that headspace of uh, automatic creation and being able to compose in that headspace will bring you to stronger outputs. You know, it's just a rapid iterative workflow. Uh, you know, similar to if anyone has taken a traditional gesture drawing course or figure drawing, you know that there are uh, stages to the final life drawing and it usually starts with gesture studies. All right, so here I'm just getting very nitpicky, uh, you know, testing out the uh, silhouettes integration to the rest of the ship. Um, I will say, try not to get too obsessed over things like this. Um, just keep that camera rotating, keep looking around um, and really check all areas of the, uh, the model to um, make sure that um, aesthetically and form and function wise, there's harmony. You know, one of the main reasons for this particular uh, series and uh, tutorial is uh, I wanted to really kind of bring the focus back to some traditional practices that um, I kind of see starting to um, become less and less uh, of a focus throughout the industry. And what I'm getting at is the importance of um, the automatic creation process, you know, abstraction, uh, exploring your subconscious modeling. Uh, these are things that artists tend to do when they have personal works, whereas in their professional works tend to be a, a bit more um, more linear, you know, a bit more um, em empirical in concept. And, uh, you know, it's just really vital to give yourself some time, you know, throughout your weeks or days to have these explorative studies. Um, you know, you'll, you'll really... You know, you might potentially surprise yourself with things that you have an interest in or that sit deep within your mind. All right, so now that I have created a bit of aesthetic balance to the uh, pilot seat, um, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, as you saw, cut away that little cap, the residue of its original form, which isn't needed. And now I can um, finish exploring shapes. And I'm trying to trim the back of that little crevice that is creating some, somewhat of like a an obelisk shape. Uh, you know, again, don't get too obsessed over the minor details. You know, a model like this, um, again, it took about maybe 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm just testing lighting before I commit. And you know, that's something I would say definitely kind of reserve for the end. Once you feel like you've gotten, say, 70 to 75%, maybe 80% of the modeling done. Um, you're just, again, testing that harmony to see how 
it may potentially look in its final outputs. Um, so from here, you know, I'm going to go ahead and switch out my materials. I wanted a metallic fader, something that showed better highlight and reflection. Again, all vital for foreign language. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and explore uh, dynameshing this. And the reason why I'm doing so is because I like the form harmony. And now I want to go ahead and add a subtle illusion of a boolean. This is going to push, I'm sorry, an illusion of beveling on some of the sharper trims. Um, this is going to create better contrast as well as uh, a little bit more um, harmony in how these languages work together. So here I am um, polishing it, which is a very subtle smooth. You can notice that the contrast just pops a little bit more. If you found this short lecture series to be useful, please stick around for more information on my upcoming mentorship program, a 30-day course tailored specifically toward you, your goals, and improving your production abilities. Thank you.